What is going on guys and girls, it is Ghost Robo and welcome to my big 2013 E3 awards show. It's been a long time coming, but I finally have prepared a list of 18 trophies to dole out to the most deserving games that I played and saw at E3. We are going to do winners and runners up for a bunch of categories, including biggest surprise game, best graphics, game of the show, all sorts of stuff. And if your opinions differ from mine, that's okay, don't worry. We don't have to kill each other or anything like that. It's perfectly cool to have and enjoy different kinds of games and experiences. Whew. Without further ado, guys and girls, smash that like button if you enjoy this video and are excited for some E3 awards. We're going to kick it off with the biggest surprise game. That's one of my favorite categories to pick, and the runner-up for that is Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, um, the third-person squad-based uh, cooperative shooter, wave-based shooter um, from the fine folks at PopCap, merging with DICE to make this really gorgeous, amazingly cute and fun and colorful Plants vs. Zombies shooter. The winner, though, is Dying Light, which I thought looked incredible. This is the basically true sequel to Dead Island from the fine folks at Techland, their next-gen zombie killing uh, experience merged with some Mirror's Edge style parkour. So you still have the same melee focused zombie combat, um, big open world, but now there is traversal atop the roofs, atop poles, running, jumping, climbing, and a true day-night cycle, which introduces some crazy one-hit kill zombies um, that only come out in, at night, introducing a little bit more stealth to the gameplay. What I saw, a behind-closed-door gameplay demo, looked awesome awesome, beautiful game with what seem to be dynamic quests coming in at you, um, and if they can find a way to make that traversal really fun and a necessary part of either evasion or attack, I think it could be a great one uh, when it releases sometime next year. The next category is Best Graphics, um, and this one was a little bit tricky because a lot of the games um, that you see trailers for or that you watch in the press conferences, they look even better in person. And I didn't have an opportunity to see every single game that was presented at E3 in person, but I saw a good majority of them. Um, so the runner-up for this one is going to be a three-way tie between The Division, Killzone, Shadowfall, and Destiny. I thought all three of those games looked super impressive. Some specific effects in each one um, were worthy of the award themselves, but none of them stood out super high and above each other, so I wanted to kind of group them together as the runner-ups. Um, the winner, though, of Best Graphics is Infamous Second Song. Dang, that game looks so good in person. It's so clean, it's so crisp. It was the first time I was like, wow, welcome to the next gen. I saw that being played on PlayStation 3, and I just, oh, it's so gorgeous. You don't know until you actually see it in front of you how crisp the visuals look, how beautiful the character moves, how all the fire effects and smoke effects come together um, in the visual space. It's just, it's incredible. And it lets you know that, okay, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are significantly better than 360 and PS3. And imagine where they're going to get in the next three to four years. A very cool moment for me. One of my favorite gaming moments um, of the last few years was sitting down and seeing Infamous Second Son for the first time because it just blew me away. Uh, the next award is the best current gen game. Now, this is something for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, or Wii U, which I am kind of quantifying as a uh, current-gen system. Maybe it's next-gen, maybe it's current-gen. It's current-gen. Uh, so the runner-up in this category is Beyond Two Souls, the new game um, from the people that brought you Heavy Rain. It was really cool. It's a more interactive experience than Heavy Rain with some very, very uh, deep and emotional themes, it seems like. I was playing as the main girl, um, and she was with a small boy wielding an AK uh, and some crazy possession gameplay going on where you have to take control of other people's bodies and make them do dastardly tasks. I don't know. It seemed very awesome. I played about 30 minutes, and I'm excited to see where that one goes when it's released later this fall. The winner, though, of Best Current Gen Game is Super Mario 3D World. It wasn't the Mario game I was quite hoping for, um, but it's so much fun to play. It's so pretty on screen, and I think that four-player co-op in 3D Mario is going to be awesome. I like the cat suit a lot. Seems like they're bringing back bosses, uh, and it, it looks great. It's uh, the next wave of Wii U games, and they all look super awesome, the first-party stuff, but Mario 3D World in particular... It's very, very crisp on camera, uh, on screen, on console. Best next-gen game, this would be something for PlayStation 4 um, or Xbox One. The runner-up's The Division, and I give it the runner-up because it looked super awesome. I don't have a negative thing to say about it, but we just don't know a whole lot. Um, it obviously wasn't playable at E3, and I'm not sure exactly how that one's going to come together. You know, when games are first shown at a big event, they bring out their, their best, biggest display of fireworks and, and explosion and fun, how the game eventually 
ends up when it's you know printed and, and sent off to retailers is a different story. Um, but that that holds so much promise. Sort of this open world RPG with other players being involved. It reminded me of some crazy zombie apocalypse game. Uh, I don't know if they're zombies or not, but just like survival and leveling up and fighting off real life opponents seems super just super cool. Uh, but my winner for ne best next-gen game is Titanfall, and I did not have a chance to play Titanfall, but I think it's doing some very cool things uh, for the online first-person first -person shooter genre. Um, I know it's not promising much of a single-player portion, but I think the fast mechs is a really brilliant idea. Um, some of the cool things they're doing in match, like after a team wins, having them try to fight back to the extraction point for extra XP. Very cool touches, some non-playable characters in the match for extra XP gains. I don't know, I think they're innovating upon the call Duty formula, and if it turns out to be a great success, will really define the landscape um, for the next generation and, and be a huge boost to Xbox One since it is exclusive, at least at the start, um, for those guys. The biggest disappointment, um, I broke down my biggest disappointment surprise into biggest disappointment game and biggest disappointment thing, biggest surprise game, biggest dis surprise thing. Um, and for biggest disappointment thing, it was that nothing was really playable. I was going there expecting to get my hands on a dozen Xbox One games, a dozen PS4, and it really was only a very select few things you could play on the next-gen consoles. Indie stuff, uh, Knack, Rise, Killer Instinct, not a whole lot else. Um, some cross-gen carryovers, so you could get some hands-on time with the controllers, but there was no kills, and there was no Infamous, there was no um, Dead Rising 3. A lot of these bigger titles that people were very excited for weren't playable at the show, and it was a little bit of a bummer. Um, Tied with that, I didn't do a runner-up in this category because these were these were tied together. Uh, is no new Nintendo IP. I can't believe it's another year. I can't believe it's a struggling year for that company, and they're still not willing to announce a brand new franchise. We have Pikmin, we have Donkey Kong, we have Mario, we have Mario Kart, we have Zelda. They're great. They're awesome. They're going to be fun games. Probably sell really well. But where is the breath of fresh air? I just haven't seen it in so long from them, and I don't know when it's coming. Miyamoto has teased a new franchise for 2014, but I. For all we know, it could be a, a sequel to Nintendogs, or we fit, we fit you, I don't even know. Um, but something I am very excited for is my most hyped category, and the runner-up in that one is MGS5. Open world MGS, <gasps> it looks so pretty. Some of those character models, the sniper girl, even Snake himself, they look awesome, and I think that an open world style game um, will be really fun. I hope that they do the stealth and balance it well so it's not frustrating, uh, but a good mix of action stealth, gorgeous open world, a lot of missions to take on, it's going to be a, a real gem uh, when it releases probably in like 2015. Uh, winner for most hype might come out even later than 2015, Mirror's Edge 2. You guys know I love Mirror's Edge 1, I've always wanted Mirror's Edge 2 since the first game came out and they finally showed it off to us. It looked incredibly stunning from a visual standpoint and the talk of a more open world, exploration driven uh, less, even less gunplay is really exciting. It's it's the kind of game that you don't see made very often. And if they nail that parkour aspect in a huge open city with brilliant, pristine, clean visuals, that's going to be a, a true special game. Uh, I just don't know when it's going to come out. It might not be till 2016. They gave no timetable, um, and it seems like they just prepared a very small vertical slice and are in no way ready to uh, push forward with any sort of release date on that one. Fingers crossed is a cool category I invented uh, for games that I think are going to be fun, but my fingers are crossed that they really deliver once they finally release. The runner-up is The Order 1866. This is the PlayStation 4 exclusive from Sony Santa Monica and Ready at Dawn. We didn't get much uh, information on what kind of game this is, but it looks like a squad-based shooter, um, sort of time travel mechanics in a Victorian London type area. Looked really cool from the trailer. Um, fingers crossed that they can come together and be a standout new IP for Sony. New IPs are always exciting on new systems when they turn out well. Uh, the winner in this category is another three-way tie between Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed 4, and Dead Rising 3. I thought all three of these games fit nicely together in that they're very pretty, they're very action-packed, they seem very fun, a lot going on, big worlds, um, but which of them will deliver when they're finally released? Is it going to be all three? Is it going to be none of them? Will Dead Rising 3 uh, suffer from sort of that launch window sickness where most games that come out in the beginning days of a console aren't the greatest will assassin's creed 4 return to glory or will it suffer from the yearly uh, renewal of that franchise watchdogs can it distinguish itself from gta 5 we will have to wait and see the biggest surprise thing from e3 2013 um the runner-up was the playstation 4 controller i was so pleased with that ps4 controller so much goodness in that little box or piece of plastic it's not really a box it's much more uh 
of, of a joystick, I guess. But it's, it's really, really cool. I like it a lot. It impressed me significantly. I'm not a fan of the DualShock 3. This one, though, big improvement. Uh, and the biggest surprise was the Wii U Resurgence. I went in kind of very fearful for them. I, I thought that they could maybe bring it around, um, but the way in which they did it really surprised me. Calling on old franchises, the Marios, the Mario Karts, the Zeldas, and the Donkey Kongs, um, and mixing in a few fun things like Pikmin 3, Bayonetta 2, I thought they did a really nice job of establishing themselves as a premier game maker, um, one that is going to deliver a slew of great titles this fall and into next year, and potentially as the, as the opportunity to seize control um, a little bit from Sony and Microsoft because they will be offering such polished and pretty experiences um, on a console. Can they push enough units to really make that a reality? I'm not sure, but it definitely left me smiling uh, as I walked out of that Nintendo booth. On the opposite end of the spectrum is Biggest Disappointment Game, and the runner up here is Rise. I never was very excited for a Roman-themed game from Crytek, but I had hoped that it would be a little more than a flashy, linear button masher, and it borrows a lot of combat from Batman Arkham Asylum, that series, and they talk a big game about, you know, oh, it's from mashing to mastery. You can start off just smashing the buttons, but eventually you'll learn counters and timing and blah. It's very linear. The demo I played, you were on the thinnest path I've seen in a long time, and if it's just going to be walking through pretty set pieces and fighting some dudes in, in arenas, that is not a game that I want to spend $60 on whatsoever. Uh, the winner, though, in this biggest disappointment game category is Sonic Lost World. I really hoped for a big, brand new 3D Mario, and since we didn't get that, I thought maybe Sonic Lost World could deliver. I know that Mario 3D World is 3D, but not in the same way of 64 Sunshine or Galaxy. Man, the demo I played of Sonic was rough as rough can be. The two levels I tried both just didn't feel good, didn't play well, were boring and very limited in, uh, in what you were actually doing on screen. Ugh, that left a sour taste in my mouth. For sure. What didn't, though, was my best handheld games, both of them. Uh, Tear Away, the runner up for PlayStation Vita, a clever, quirky game from the people that brought you Little Big Planet, pushing your finger through the screen, using the back touchpad, using the front touchscreen. Seems like you're really finally getting to truly taste what the PlayStation Vita is made of, both from a graphical standpoint and from a sort of uh, secondary functionality with their camera, with their touchpads, with their. Uh, motion control, so I'm hoping that that one uh, will turn out to be a fun and exciting handheld bite-sized adventure. The winner, though, is Zelda A Link Between Two Worlds. That game, another one that I didn't want to put down. So much fun. It's really pretty in 3D. The mechanic where you zoom onto the wall um, and then pop off is very cool and clever, and I can see how they're going to use that for a lot of great puzzles. Just a tried-and-true awesome Zelda game. You got multiple weapons at once, controlled by a mana bar. It felt really, really good, um, and I cannot wait for that one coming this holiday season. My next category is one I invented as well called What Is This? And it's a game that you don't really know much about but looks super awesome. And the runner-up is Quantum Break. We don't know a whole lot of that and what the Alan Wake developer Remedy is going to deliver with a attempted television tie-in to a game uh, franchise. How that all pans out? Is it mostly shooter, mostly exploration? I don't really know. Um, the true winner, though, is Sunshine Overdrive. Insomniac's return to sort of craziness after the abomination that was Fuse and how they tried to make it a little bit more realistic. This game, though, balls out crazy. I don't know if it's going to be an open-world shooter. It seems like it's very fast-moving. Maybe some graffiti elements, a little Jet Set Radio in there. Who knows? But they got me with the bright orange, the bright blues, and the name Sunshine Overdrive. Uh, the next category is Where Are You? Games that were not there, and I wish they were. The runner-up, of course, is GTA V, because I would have loved to get some hands-on time with that game um, before it came out. Sadly, no such luck. And the winner here is Fallout 4. I think everybody was hoping Bethesda would have a surprise announcement at either of the big press conferences, and they really didn't. You know, they focused on Wolfenstein, The Evil Within, uh, stuff like that. But no, Fallout 4, I'm sure it's coming. It's going to be amazing, hopefully, and look really, really pretty since that wasn't one of the strong points on this generation's Fallout games. Uh, but we don't know when it'll be unveiled. There was rumor that it was shown to press behind closed doors, but I think that's been proven false. Um, and so, Fallout 4, where are you? I need ya. Um, again, kind of shifting gears, overhyped. Two games that, that really seem to be, you know, out there in front of everybody with their trailers and with their, their promoting and, and all that. But but to me, I don't know. And and the runner-up is a little bit of a 
I didn't know if I should slot this here or not, but bear with me on my explanation. Watch Dogs. I think Watch Dogs looks very cool. I think they're talking a very big game, and anytime you have a, a huge open world and you're spitting all this stuff about, oh my god, all this interactivity and the people and the reactions, that's a dangerous storm uh, to be walking into, especially when you're going to be putting many of those features exclusively on the next-gen consoles and hoping that it can all come together uh, with a very early cycle game. I don't know. I hope that it distinguishes itself from Grand Theft Auto. I hope they incorporate more of the traversal, sort of the fast-paced uh, movement that Assassin's Creed has into Watch Dogs, and they can have some unique mission structures um, that aren't just go here and kill these people and do it however you want. Um, so I'm a little bit worried about that one. I think it's a little bit overhyped, but I still think it has a chance to release deliver and impress me immensely and possibly be a game of the year contender the most overhyped game though is battlefield 4 um, i played that for about 40 minutes and while it was fun it's more battlefield i would have loved to see them do something different you know take the titanfall approach and reinvent yourself i know that battlefield is a tried and true series that everyone loves for its very specific reasons and perhaps they would have gotten a little flack if they made a you know took a divergent path, but then do Bad Company 3, or, or do something a little different, start off the next generation with a bang, um, and don't just make a prettier version of every single first-person shooter we've played in the last five, six, seven years. It controls great, it looks awesome, it's gonna be fun, I just think that it would have been cool if they would have shown something different, and instead, everyone's talking about this as like, the prettiest, best game ever, and really it's just a touched-up Battlefield 3. Don't get me wrong, it looks good. I just wasn't so excited after playing it. Um, the Weirdest Shock, a category that has more to do with themes than it does specific games. The runner-up is where are the Sony exclusives? You know, they had a chance to really put the nail in the coffin um, on Microsoft and instead talked Order 16, 1866, Infamous, Killzone, Knack, and, and not much else in terms of exclusives. Sure, they had the exclusive demos for Assassin's Creed 4 and games like that, but where were their brand new experiences? Um, either a new God of War, The Last Guardian, something that really wowed us, and I just didn't find anything that I didn't know about previously um, at the Sony conference that really blew me away, and I'm hoping that... They, they're talking that they have a lot of new IP, so I'm hoping they can really uh, come through with those later this year, maybe at Gamescom or, or maybe after the console releases, but hopefully 2014 will yield some fun and fresh uh, Sony products. The most fun hands-on game. This is one that I actually got to play because, like I mentioned, so much stuff was behind closed doors or only eyes-on, not hands-on. Um, and these two are two Nintendo titles. I might get some flack for this, but I'm going to be honest. These were the most fun games I played, and I can't I can't make this up. It's something that I know because I was there and I played them. The runner-up is Zelda Between Two Worlds, the 3DS game, and the winner is Super Mario 3D World. Two games I didn't want to leave the demo stations um, and ones I can't wait to have in my home later uh, in 2013. A cool category, a tiny game that no one is talking about, but it's going to be awesome. Uh, the runner-up there is Outlast. This is a PlayStation 4 indie exclusive a horror game. You're in sort of this asylum area, first person. You've got like a handy cam that is just puts up this creepy, uh, very gray and very, um, ugh, it's just eerie filter, kind of like a, a fuzzy, crackly TV screen or something, and you're trying to avoid these these monsters, almost amnesia style, it doesn't seem like you have much weaponry, very pretty graphics, uh, very hands-on, like grabbing doorknobs, turning them, feels great at the PlayStation 4 controller, I think it's going to be a winner, uh, and the best tiny game that no one's talking about what's going to be awesome is Dive Kick, I don't know if you guys have seen this, um, it's a one, well, two-button fighting game, uh, that's going to be releasing later this year on downloadable platforms. It's so awesome. You have to check it out. Dive kick, dive kick, dive kick. Don't forget that one. The rounds take sometimes two seconds, sometimes 20, but it's addictive. It's fun. It's entirely mechanic driven and one that I love. Um, Ooh, pretty is my second to last category, which is a game that we saw in trailer format um, that was just amazingly gorgeous um, and really looked like a fun time whenever it comes out. The runner-up is MGS5. We've talked a lot about that. You know how I feel. Uh, but the winner is Final Fantasy XV. I, if you guys probably don't know this, but I've been a big Final Fantasy fan for a long time and kind of disappointed by some of their later releases. I wasn't the hugest uh, proponent of Final Fantasy Thirteen, I didn't really like that so much. Lightning Returns seems like it could be back on the right track, but I'm very excited for fifteen. The game looks unreal. I mean, it seems like they're taking a more action approach, which I'm in favor of, and dang, that trailer. Like, if you haven't seen it, <laughs> go freaking watch it. Um, which brings us to the game of the show. We've covered a bunch of games. I tried not to have too many repeat winners, um, unless it was entirely necessary. There were so many games I enjoyed at this show. You know, current-gen stuff, like Beyond Two Souls, like Super Mario 3D World, next-gen stuff, like Killzone, uh, like MGS5, The Division, and 
uh, just a laundry list of really cool games, even handheld stuff like Zelda A Link Between Two Worlds. But when it came down to it, there were two games that stood out above the rest and were the ones I was like, I need to play this. Titanfall would be my third third place game if I had to, to give one of those, but I don't. I just have a runner up and a winner. And therefore, the runner up game of the show 2013 is Destiny. I'm so excited for this one. I, whew, it's, it fits everything I like shooter, RPG elements, a big, pretty open world, even some multiplayer fun in there. I think it could be special. Redefining what an MMO means via a shooter and via great storytelling and awesome world building. Um, the guys at Bungie seem to be on the path to greatness here. They've invested so much into this upcoming franchise, and I think it's going to pay off. Of course, the gameplay looks very sharp and fun. The visuals are astounding, and I think a lot of what they're doing with allowing you to level up your guns and kind of tech trees inside the weapons, um, as well as your character's superpowers, uh, the ability to to team up, create a character, huge landscapes, multiple planets. I think that's going to be just a monster of a game whenever it comes out, hopefully uh, early slash mid-2014, though I'm worried it's going to get delayed to fall holiday 2014, so we may be waiting a long time on that one. One that you won't be waiting a long time, though, for is my game of the show. I bet a lot of you can guess it. Yes, it's Infamous Second Son for the PlayStation 4, releasing sometime uh, first half of next year. I was blown away. I was blown away. I liked Infamous 1 and 2 uh, quite a bit. Not like my favorite game of all time or a game of the year winner, but I liked them a lot. Man, this game looks so sweet. The destructibility, the environments, the crazy new powers that Delson, the main character, has. It seems like they're refocusing on a more emotional story instead of sort of jerky coal. And Seattle looks beautiful. Man, they've recreated that uh, real-life city in such a awesome way. When you see the game on your own TV screen, you're going to be floored. It looks so cool. I love the fact that Delson can absorb other uh, conduits' powers and maybe have fire, ice, smoke, plant, who knows, whatever they decide to include. Um, but it seems like it's going to be sort of the showpiece uh, PlayStation 3 ti PlayStation 4 title um, after launch, kicking off 2014. Killzone's going to be great, but I think Infamous Second Son is really going to win everybody over. Those are my E3 awards. From the very beginning and biggest surprise game of Dying Light to the final game of the show, Infamous Second Son, you know what I think. A long, long list, but one that I thought was important to get in your guys' hands. Let me know what you think, some of your favorites um, from the show, any games that you agree on, disagree on with me. It's always fun to discuss. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. I hope you did. I really put a lot of time and effort and thought uh, into making the categories that I thought were the most important and then finding games um, that really fit for me based on everything I experienced and saw in my probably, what, 16, 18 hours at E3 over the course of three days uh, in early June. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Drink some hot chocolate, guys and girls. Until next time, that's E3 2013 wrapped up. The awards are in. The trophies have been delivered. Now it's time for these games to release. Until that time, everybody, thanks again. We will see you all 